You have invested in drug companies such as Johnson and Johnson and Sanofi. How do you evaluate the pipeline of these companies and know if their competitive advantage is indeed uh, enduring? Well, that's a good question. And we, unlike many businesses, if we were when we invest in something like pharma, uh, we don't know the answer on the pipeline, and it'll be a different pipeline anyway five years from now. So we we don't know whether Pfizer. Uh, or Merck, uh, you know, or you, you name it, Johnson & Johnson. We don't know which of those will come up with a blockbuster commercial drug three or four years from now, and we don't try to assess it. What we do feel is that we have a group of those companies bought at reasonable prices that overall pharma will do well, maybe not quite as well as they have in the past, but they're doing something enormously important. They're doing something that, that should offer chances for decent profits, over time, and we do not pick one by one. I could not tell you uh, what's the number one potential in the pipeline of a J and J or Santa Fe or whatever which one you, you want to name. So I think in that area, actually a group uh, a group approach uh, makes sense, which is not the way we would go at the banks or something of that sort. I, I do think if if you buy pharma stocks at a reasonable multiple. Uh, a group of them, you know, you'll probably do okay five or ten years from now. I would not know how to pick the specific winner. Charlie? Well, you speak from a position where you have a monopoly of our joint knowledge about pharmacology. 